Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast Lean Six Sigma Bursts are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In this podcast, I share the sample audio chapter that I released with Volume 1 of Lean Six Sigma for Good. My chapter was applying Lean and Six Sigma to a nonprofit fundraising conference. It's about five minutes long. We just released volume two in audiobook format, so you can also check that out. In episode 97, you can check out the sample chapter presented by Elizabeth Swan. So if you haven't heard that, go back and listen to that one. We'll put links to both volume one and volume two in the notes, so you can choose between whichever one you prefer. There's eight chapters in each book. You can also get the paperback or the Kindle version. The audio isn't actually the greatest. I had each author do their own audio, and so the quality may not be great at all times, but hopefully you get the clear message in each of the chapters, and you're hearing it directly from the person who did the work. So hopefully that will account for some of the quality problems you might encounter. Thanks. Chapter 5, Brian Hurley, Applying Lean Six Sigma to a Nonprofit Fundraiser Conference, Running a Small Nonprofit. My entire work career has revolved around process improvement. I studied statistics and quality management in college, then worked for 18 years at Rockwell Collins as a Lean Six Sigma black belt. About 10 years ago, I started to transition to sustainability work, applying improvement techniques to social and environmental problems. In 2015, I got involved in a nonprofit organization called Recycling Advocates in Portland, Oregon. After a year, I was asked to take over as president of the 30-year-old organization, which was founded in 1987. I was new to the nonprofit board member role, so I was nervous about becoming the president. However, I figured my passion for the environment, along with the support and mentoring from other board members, would help me figure out what to do. We are a small nonprofit, so we didn't have many products or services that we offered other than education to our members. In the past, we have supported campaigns to improve recycling and other environmental causes, such as plastic bags ban, reusable beer bottles, bottle deposit bill, and e-waste regulations. Since I came on board, we have spent most of our time working on the problem of disposable and non-recyclable coffee cups. However, that was also one of the challenges I had to deal with first, to make the organization more financially viable. We would ask for donations to support our causes, but it wasn't working very well. We were not bringing in enough money to cover our minimal expenses, which is overhead costs for a part-time resource director. One of the ideas that our board members came up with was to set up a conference and charge money for tickets. I agreed that it would be easier to provide our members with some value for their money instead of just asking for a donation. I was noticing that there was a lot of discussion in Portland around the topic of a zero-waste lifestyle, focusing on minimizing purchases and reducing the amount of trash being generated at home. Some people have even reduced their trash down to one bag or container per year. Let me pause for a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Creative Safety Supply. Creative Safety Supply is a great resource for free guides, infographics, and continuous improvement tools. I recommend starting with their 5S guide. It includes breakdowns of the five pillars, ways to begin implementing 5S, and even organization tips and color charts. From red tags to floor markings, it's all there. Download it for free at creativesafetysupply.com 5s. In the business world, there was also a growing interest in companies becoming zero waste to support their sustainability programs. I recently achieved a certification as a true zero waste business advisor. I felt that hosting a conference to bring people together to educate them about how they can apply zero waste principles to their life would be a great idea, both for our organization and for our supporters. But I hadn't ever set up or run a conference before, especially an event with more than 20 people with a focus on raising money for a nonprofit organization. Since my background is in Lean and Six Sigma, I felt confident that I could use these tools and techniques to help me figure it out. I've also attended a lot of Lean and Six Sigma conferences over the years, so I felt like I was experienced as a conference attendee. I have often thought about ways to improve the conference experience. Will anyone attend? The first thing I did was partner with someone who knew the potential audience better than I. I connected with a friend of mine to help me out, Chloe LePeltier. She ran a Facebook group called Zero Waste PDX, and it was gaining in popularity. I pitched the idea to her, and she liked it and was interested in helping me set it up. The next thing we did was to figure out if there was actual interest in having a conference. 
If there was interest, what would people want to learn? We didn't want to waste too much effort putting on a conference that nobody wanted to attend. As with any effort, we need to know if we are offering value to our customers. A few years ago, I read a popular book called The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. He talks about ways you can test out your ideas first before you design and develop a new product or service. These concepts were developed based on the principles of the Toyota production system, which is the foundation of lean methodology. There was another book published shortly after explaining how these lean startup concepts could be applied to nonprofits in the book Lean Startups for Social Change by Michael Golopter. I was excited to test out these startup concepts on this conference. Side note, uh, I actually ran into Michael Golopter. We had emailed back and forth for a while. I was trying to get him to come up to Portland to do some training on that topic. We actually met in Trinidad on an airplane going from Panama to the to Trinidad, and I talked about that in my last podcast. So it was really strange that we ran into each other. He's actually sitting in the row in front of me, which is really bizarre, but I digress. We first set up an online survey to see what kind of response we would get for our conference idea. I was confident there would be interest, but I didn't know how much interest there would be. That is the whole point of the Lean Startup approach, to get actual data on uncertain ideas from the customers and stakeholders. It's also a core principle in Six Sigma, gathering and analyzing data. So I really like this approach. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with the history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.